Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be celebrating and sharing with you my journey over the past five years on YouTube. I asked you guys for some questions to celebrate and just to process some thoughts and to look back on the last five years. So I've been five years here on YouTube. I just recently hit 50K, 50,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So today's video, we're just gonna digest all of that information. And I asked you guys if you had any questions about my time here on YouTube. So I'm just gonna be doing my makeup, my everyday, my kind of go-to makeup at the moment, and just sharing some of the answers to these questions that you guys had. But we are also, most importantly, going to be doing my 50K giveaway in this video. Now, I did originally say that I was going to add in a, like an item of choice, but this giveaway, the prize has just grown so much, and I was getting really worried about how I was gonna post this, and I really really wanted to keep this international, which is already very expensive to post such a big prize internationally. So I just decided to let's just do it as is. Stop stressing about it, stop procrastinating about it, and just get the video up because it is an amazing giveaway as always. I'll put up a photo of it, but I mean, we've got an Yves Saint Laurent makeup pouch. We've got some of the new MAC Wild Cherry collection. We've got some NARS products. We've got NARS lippies. We've got NARS blush. We've got some Sigma brushes and some Shiseido. We've got some Charlotte Tilbury, of course, some Charlotte Tilbury, a collagen lip bath. We've got some skincare from Rodial in here. I've got one of my favorite mascaras, little mini mascara liner duo from Pat McGrath. We've got nail varnish. We've got lipsticks. We've got multiple from NARS. We've got eyeshadow palettes. There is like a whole lot in here, okay? This is a very, very good prize. And for every day that goes by, I'm putting more stuff in there, so it's only getting better. So if you want to find out all about my YouTube journey over the past five years and how to enter this 50,000 subscriber giveaway, then keep watching. So fair warning, I'm not gonna be talking about like what I'm using and doing a tutorial because I'm already doing too many things at once that it is, but I will list everything that I've used in the description box if you're curious about anything. I'm just gonna do like my kind of go-to sort of everyday type of makeup really because I mean, that's exactly what today is. I was really stressed this morning, like at the thought of filming because I haven't filmed for almost three weeks. It's been school holidays here, Easter holidays. I spent the last two weeks, every minute of every day with my children and my husband, and it has been joyful. We've just had the best time. So I'm feeling like really, really emotional today. I feel sad, I miss them, I feel emotional. And then I was like, oh, I've got to go and film because I didn't have a video to go up today. I had nothing left in the bank. But I feel fine now, I feel chill, I'm in my space. I'm with you guys, this is a safe space, and I feel good now, I'm embracing it, I'm enjoying looking out at my window in front of me, enjoying this glorious sunshine, it's such lovely weather for Easter, and it's continuing. So yeah, how lovely was that for a break? We went to London, I did post some London pics on my Instagram, and we had a fab time, but the rest of the time really we were just seeing family and just enjoying some family time all together. I'm sorry if the light is just constantly changing today because it's sunny but there's clouds about. It's literally a disaster when it comes to like lighting, but it is what it is. So the first question from Great Blends, what would you do differently along your YouTube journey, knowing what you know now? Do you batch film? How do you plan out your YouTube work week? I mean, the one thing I thought about, I mean, there's lots of like things that I did wrong, in theory, along the way, things that I could have done better, things that would have been helpful along the way, but I just honestly wouldn't change anything about that, anything that I knew or anything that I did as far as like, my channel because honestly the first year I was on YouTube 
just didn't count. Like I didn't grow really at all. I really didn't get any views or many views or many subscribers. So could I go back and do that first year far better now? Yes. But at the same time, I don't regret it and I wouldn't change it because it ultimately just gave, I had a year of practice basically with no one really watching my videos, learning a lot along the way with every video I did. You know, I learned something and I don't really regret the process. It was a nice slow burner. You know, I worked things out in that year. I've deleted a lot of those videos because they're embarrassing to be honest. I just didn't know what I was doing, but I learned a lot. It gave me time to work out whether I was actually wanting to do this without, you know, a huge number of people knowing I was, you know, on the, like, the platform and knowing about my channel. I just grew nice and peacefully minding my business. And yeah, so I don't, I wouldn't really change anything about that. I think the one thing I would change if I could do it all again would be using my full name. Like I just didn't even occur to me to not do that, to not use, you know, my first and last name on the, as my channel name. I know lots of people said that you should use your name as in your first name, but um, like I wish I'd done a Tara Lynn and just used like my first and middle name and not my last name because that would have just given me that extra bit of like security and privacy or whatever, but it's too late now, you know? It is what it is. So, and I'm sure that you could, if you wanted to, that you could probably find out my last name, whether or not I put it on here. I'm sure that you probably could do that anyway, but that's something I kind of didn't even occur to me. <laughs> to not use my last name. But that's, as far as the things I've learned along the way, I wouldn't go back and do them differently because they're all just such valuable, valuable lessons. So yeah, I could definitely have done literally everything better, but you know, what would I have learned then? As far as like batch filming and like how I organize my week, that was definitely a, again, a popular sort of question. And it really depends. Like there's no such thing as like a normal week because it all fully depends if there's new releases, what time of year it is, what's going on, what's going on with me. Are we in the holidays? Have I got plenty of time? Are my kids in school? It all totally depends and every week is different. Like your average week, I would do at least a couple of videos at a time because if you're gonna get ready to film, you're gonna sit down, you're gonna do your makeup ready to film, like you might as well do at least a couple, you know? And then that gives me a bit more time to edit. Like I hate, I hate with a vengeance, the days when I have to film, edit, thumbnail, links, upload everything on the same day. That's like a lot, a lot in one day and it feels like arduous. So what I try to do is I'll try to film three videos a week. So that's how many I upload, but each week I will film Wednesday, Friday's videos and the following Monday's videos so that I don't like have to film on the Monday to get that Monday video ready. And I might not edit that Monday video until Monday comes, but I don't have to do everything then for that video on that one day. Cause you just don't know, you know, I'm a mum and anything can happen. You know, the school can send your child home, maybe their teacher's off sick, or maybe I'm sick. And so I always like to have at least like one video for the following week up and ready to go, because it just takes the pressure and the stress off of like having to film and get everything done on the Monday. Banana Noodle asks, do I do paid promotions? Do I think that brands have got less or more demanding about what you can and can't say? I mean, I have never really had a brand tell me anything as far as like what you can and can't say. Brands really, I think people, that's something that people think happens more than it does. It really isn't a common occurrence. I've certainly never had a brand like trying to give me a script or telling me what to say. They really don't want that. You know, brands believe in the products. That's why they want a sponsored video. They want to get the products that they think are great out there. So, you know, they, and they also, they'll choose the creators that they, you know, they like your personality, the style, the way that you present products. So they really just want that. They want your authentic personality. You know, brands are not stupid. They know that if they sort of give you a script and the things to say about the product that aren't your sort of normal, natural way of presenting products and making videos, that it's just not going to feel right or look 
good. Like they're not stupid and they know that subscribers aren't stupid. So they typically will just say, you know, we want a video of this product, you know, your own, what, however you want to do it. This is what we want. Sometimes it's quite common for them to ask for like something like, um, they might want to make sure that you're using the product in the video. So, you know, say it's a foundation, they don't want you to just talk about it. They want you to, you know, please, please make sure you show the application of the foundation, or they might draw, want you to draw attention to a discount code or a sale that they've got coming on. And that, that'll be like literally it. That's about as kind of instructive as brands get, you know, or they'll, they might say, please include our website in the description box or something like that. If you've got a code or a link, that's like an affiliate link so they can track how many of your viewers came like from the video or something like that. But they really do not tell you what to say. That's just really never been, I mean, if they did, then I just wouldn't be doing the video because that's far too much. I find them stressful as it is without having to like remember some lines. So Amber has a few questions here. The first one was, I nervous about starting YouTube? I really wasn't. I think a lot of people feel very nervous, very worried about what people are going to say. I really didn't feel that way at all. Like I didn't feel worried or nervous about starting it um, really at all. It was just about sort of just doing it. Like I, I procrastinated about it for months, but there wasn't really any kind of fear involved there. I wasn't like scared of what was going to happen or what people would say. I think I'm just, I think that's probably a bigger thing if you're a bit younger, maybe if you're still at school and things like that and you worry about, you know, people gossiping, but I felt like I was, you know, that's just not, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what people say. What has been the most challenging part? I think honestly, YouTube and me are not a natural combination. Like there are so many things that are just not a good fit for like me and my personality that come along with YouTube. Like, you know, I really am quite a private person. You know, I'd, I'd be happy to like delete all of my socials. Like I don't really love social media. I don't like being on social media. I would love to like go and live in the woods somewhere just with my family and, you know, never see another person again. That's kind of my my typical way of being. So this, you know, YouTube space is literally the opposite of everything that I hold dear. <laughs> everything about me, it's just very not suited to me and my natural way that I am. I'm quite, you know, quiet, withdrawn, antisocial all of the above and obviously YouTube is kind of the opposite of all of that stuff. So there's a lot like that that I found challenging. I also am useless at like cutting off work. Like I have always been that like my whole work life where you know, I can't stop working until everything is done. And obviously with like YouTube and social media, you're constantly getting DMs and messages and comments like forever. So if you don't stop at some point, you'll die. It's things like that that I find challenging is, is like taking breaks, taking time off, like finding a line of where the work day ends because it will never end if you don't end it, you know? The most rewarding thing is definitely like helping people. I think, you know, obviously the majority of the videos I make are beauty and makeup videos and you could, you know, believe that you're not really doing anything that matters. But I get a lot of messages, a lot of comments that say otherwise, that, you know, if you can give someone a bit more confidence, make someone feel a bit more, or a bit less alone, like they've got people who are like them or that like the same things and just someone to talk to and hang out with. And that is just, for 100%, that is the most rewarding bit is like the community. Do you see this? Do you see this? This is why I get cross with you. The pilling, it happens with this primer more often than I would like. As far as where I'd see myself in five years time, I really just don't do that. I just don't feel like you can do that with YouTube. Like literally anything can happen and you don't really have much control over it. So, you know, I could say, oh, I'd like to have X number of subscribers this year, or I'd like to have X number of views or whatever. But given that you really don't have that much control over that, there's not a lot of point 
in sort of plucking numbers out of thin air when you, you know, anything and everything could happen. So yeah, I don't really plan that far ahead. I'm just, I always said from the beginning, as long as I'm still enjoying it, I'll keep going. And that's what I've always been like with any job. Like I used to say when I worked, you know, off office jobs, nine to fives, whatever you would like to call them, that the day when I get the Sunday dread, is the time to like move on and get a new job. Like I don't ever want to like live in fear and dread of going to work. And that's just what I've kind of done my whole sort of working life is as soon as I start to dread with a vengeance going in on a Monday, then I look for a new job. And that's kind of what I've always thought about with YouTube that, you know, when it stops being fun, when I stop enjoying it, when I start dread, like to start to dread doing it, then that's the day I'll know. I've had enough. So I'm really just going with the flow, to be honest. Debbie asked, how much does has YouTube changed in the past five years and how did I know what videos to start with? I mean, as I've alluded to, I definitely didn't know. I didn't know a thing. And that's why no one watched my videos for the first year, because I had no idea what I was doing, how to get views, how to get new subscribers. I had no idea what was going on, to be honest. So I definitely didn't know. I just made whatever I thought, whatever I thought and worked with whatever I had. Um, until I started to sort of learn how to get people to find your videos, how to sort of make videos that people were actually interested in rather than any old random video, which is definitely what I started off doing. As far as the beauty community, like it depends what you count as the beauty community, to be honest, because I'm sure people will, will say, oh, the beauty community has gone downhill, it's changed so much, it's become this really negative space, but that's not my community, that's not what I think of as my community, like my people here, the friends that I've made, the other creators that I love, and you guys, nothing has changed. I mean, the one thing I will say that I definitely feel that the sort of troll, like real trolls and hatefulness, as far as for me and on my channel, has definitely reduced over the last like five years, like since I've started. Like I get a lot less comments, given I'm so much bigger now, I get way less really hateful comments. I think part of that is that YouTube, you know, put in different rules and regulations and upped their sort of filters and how, much, how many comments they stop and like from, from me seeing and things like that. Um, and yeah, so I definitely think there's been a reduction for me personally, as far as the amount of like horrible comments, you know, you're always going to get like criticisms, people who, you know, just don't agree with what you said or don't like you. That's, you know, that's allowed, but like real sort of terrible, awful trolling. I've definitely seen that like reduced in the last few years. But as far as like my community, like the people in within my community, within my space, the people that, you know, I get along with, that I support, that I watch, I just really don't think it has changed that much, honestly. Obviously at the sort of higher end, like the much, much bigger channels, I think those people have been around, you know, take someone like Jacqueline Hill, Desi Perkins, those people who have certainly moved on from like, YouTube being like their main job. They've been in this space for years and years and years and it's only natural, I think, that they, you know, have branched out and grown a business from the platform and that YouTube is no longer sort of their primary focus. Like that sort of generation, I guess, of creators has certainly changed. But for me and my space and my little community, I can't say it has changed. We're just still doing what we always were doing and sharing products that we like and, you know, enjoying our space. Rachel D says, what's one of the videos or types of videos that you're most proud of that you've done? I think it's got to be my divorce story time. That's definitely the video that I feel the most proud of like what it meant to people. It really like went in a whole direction that I wasn't expecting whatsoever. And with that came a lot of really angry men for some reason. But the comments section of that video was just a dream for me. The amount of people, men and women, who just felt some kind of like comfort or encouragement or hope 
from listening to my story and not just my story but all of the stories that were in the comment section that people shared it was such a beautiful thing like it really obviously made a difference to people and you know you only have to read the comment section to see that how people just felt like encouraged and like there's some hope you know there were a lot of people who watched that video who were you know at the beginning of the the situation and the process that I was kind of talking about and obviously I was way past it years later in a very happy marriage now with my family and just in such a better place that I just think it gave people it just had this really unexpected reaction to me you know I did that video just because people were asking like off the back of a QA, and a like, oh, like, let's do a story time on, like, my divorce, because it sounded like an interesting story. So I really didn't expect it to, like, go viral. I didn't expect anyone outside of my subscribers, really, to see it. Um, and obviously, it, it took off, especially for, like, the size of my channel at the time, which was tiny. Um, and, you know, it really has helped so many people whether in a marriage or not you know that have gone through or going through a breakthrough that that is definitely like the video that for me I'm the most proud of even though it brought me the most amount of sh that I've had on the platform due to these crazy men that appeared out of the woodwork really angry that my husband left me and I divorced him interesting lovely Casey thank you so much what a lovely comment is it hard coming up with ideas for different types of content yes and no I mean it's my favorite thing to do I really don't like to do just like review 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 blah, 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 blah. like it feels quite monotonous to me to just keep on just doing the same type of video I love coming up with like original new ideas for videos and that's the content I'm like most excited to film um, but it is hard. I definitely go through phases. And what, one of the things I've learned about myself through the years is that when it gets to the point where I really feel like I'm struggling for ideas, I keep a note, like a notes thing in my phone that is just full of like video ideas. And I just add to it all of the time. And I just go through that whenever I'm kind of stuck for an idea, I don't know what to film today, I go through my notes. And if there's like, I get to the point where there's really nothing in there, there's nothing in there that I want to film or that I think is good to film, and I'm really struggling for ideas, what I've learned is that means I need to take a break, I'm like burned out. And that's the time to take a bit of time off, take a break. And then I come back refreshed with ideas just pouring out of my brain again. But I've always been a creative person, I guess. And so I don't really typically struggle for ideas. Like I said, if the only time I really struggle for ideas for videos is when I'm like, I need, my brain just needs to take a bit of a sleep for a while. Rachel says, I've been watching you grow. Thank you so much, Rachel. What a lovely comment. So your question is, how supportive has your family been? So, I mean, so, so supportive. My family has always been incredibly supportive of absolutely, literally everything I've ever done. They're always supportive. Like, I feel like the older generation, I mean, even my sister is not um, a big social media type of person. So although, you know, she's not exactly an older generation, like my parents or like my husband's parents and that who just literally have no idea what's going on or what I do or how that makes money and all of that stuff, like they're just happy to be involved. They're just happy to, you know, know that I'm happy and that I'm doing well and enjoying it. And they just don't really care that they don't understand it, to be honest, that they're just happy happy to, to learn and they always have really interesting questions and want to find out all about it and they're just interested um whereas again you know like my sister she's not a huge big social media person and but she does obviously understand she knows what youtube is she watches the odd youtube video um but yeah they're all just always as always with anything that i've ever done very very supportive very very proud of me whatever i do or don't do really they're just blindly supportive if anything now lovely karina asked how it's affected 
my relationship with my family doing YouTube and I mean off the back of that you can probably tell it definitely hasn't it's kind of sad to think that that would be the case for anyone I just can't really imagine that it's certainly nothing that would ever be the case with my family um but yeah I can't say there's any way shape or form that doing YouTube has changed any of my relationships whatsoever at all no one yeah there's just no no such thing in this house whatsoever. Majestic Beast, what a name, what a name. At what point in your career did you reach a point where you felt like you were seeing enough success to sustain your channel? I mean, I can't, I can't really say that that's something I've worried or thought about, to be honest. I, I don't know that you can really ever, of any size, feel like you're safe or secure in this job because, I mean, I've literally seen people lose their channels, their channel's been hacked and that's gone. And that could happen tomorrow to anybody, something like that. We see it happen more often on Instagram, people getting hacked and losing years and years of built up followers. And so I've always been kind of aware that this can go away as an option, like for income at any moment and so I just never would say that you know oh it's it's now it's safe it's sustainable it's you know I can rely and count on on it for income it's definitely not I've never felt like that and I don't think I I will really I think it's it's something you a, a career or an income that you should never really fully rely on no matter what size you are you should always be kind of aware that it is a fickle business a fickle world and one that we're not really in control of you know we don't get pensions at youtube we don't get severance pay or notice so yeah i don't think i've ever would take it for granted that this is going to last forever or even any amount of time because it's just completely unknown and out of your control. So Denise asked about my you don't need that videos and whether they have uh, affected my partnerships or not. This is a question I get quite a lot. Like, am I worried about what brands will think? Am I worried? Have I had any like backlash from brands? Have brands like taken me off PR lists? So here's the thing. I don't really, I don't care. Honestly, I don't really care. I don't think PR is what it used to be. So when I first started my channel, I was desperate to get on PR lists for the sole re I mean, obviously it's nice to get PR. It's lovely to have free makeup turn up at your doorstep. It's fantastic. And I think it is a very rewarding part of the job when brands that you love sort of recognize you and your channel and that's really exciting so it is quite rewarding it's like a nice little pat on the back but it doesn't mean what it used to I think in the old days when I started my channel getting PR was so important because it meant that you got the products the collections the latest launches that everyone was really interested in before you could buy them and that is so valuable to a creator especially one starting out especially someone who's trying to grow like that's your only opportunity is getting a review up like early and that's how you grow when you're like really small on YouTube and no one is sort of looking for your videos yet if you can get a review up of a new product a hyped up product that's really popular that people are talking about before anyone else that is invaluable and so that was why it was like so important to try and get on these PR lists because you could get reviews up before the products were available to everybody and I just don't really feel like that's the case most of the time these days you get PR I mean I got my NARS foundation like months after I'd already purchased it and done my review I got the foundation in PR like a couple of weeks ago so it doesn't still have that sort of hold over you that you need it in order to like sustain your channel and in order to get products on time it's just a nice to have now and I'd much rather like make the content that people enjoy and that I enjoy and that I think is fun and good and different and like original than worry about what brands have to say one I don't think any of these brands are watching my videos I don't think they're bothered and two I do always try to be respectful in those videos I don't think I've ever like really bashed and slandered a product in those videos then the focus is much more about you and your thought process about whether you really need this or not and I think any brand who has an issue with like critical thinking and 
financial savvy and being smart with our money and not getting into debt is not a brand that I would want to work with anyway. So Emma Louise, thank you so much. You asked what has been one, some of my funniest comments. I mean, I've had many funny comments over the years. One that still like kind of just goes through my head every now and then is this crazy one that I got about my dog. So I was filming, this is when I used to film downstairs, and my dog like had wooden floors and my dog like clip-clopped into the room where I was filming and it was really, really loud and like clippy from his nails on the wood. And um, I, so I was like mid-sentence, I just sort of stopped and I, I looked at him and I went, get out, right? That's, that's what happened, I said that to my dog. And I got this comment from someone basically saying that I was like an animal and like should have my pets taken away and how dare I talk to my dog like that and I'm unsubscribing and I've quite honestly never been so baffled in like all of my days but I still think about it now and think I wonder if that lady's okay but those sorts of comments where they're like literally you just can't fathom what's going through that person's head we do have a good chuckle I like to read them to my husband because any like really horrible ones he just finds so funny and it really takes the power away like when someone is howling with laughter you can't really cry about the same thing that they're, they're laughing at you know it takes away like the seriousness of the situation <laughs> so Loretta asks have I got any tips for getting subscribers and growing my ultimate tip really when it comes to this is to understand that there's really nothing you can do to grow any quicker other than just making the best content that you can. I think a lot of people will go nuts on like algorithm and trying to do these tags and researching this and researching that. And I just think actually the more effort and the time and the thought that you put into planning content that you think people serves people that gives people information they didn't have or teaches something or is just a great entertaining video you know of course spend time making your thumbnail and your title as good as you can but ultimately put out the best content that you absolutely can and that is the really it's that simple i think we can over complicate things a lot and worry about things that actually they might make a hair of a bit of difference but nothing is going to bring you more success on youtube than making videos that people want to watch and i think ultimately that's what the algorithm is there for and i don't think you can really cheat it i think the the most powerful effect on the algorithm is lots of people clicking on your video because it's interesting and it looks good and lots of people watching a lot of your video because it's a good video and you're entertaining and it's interesting to watch. So really don't worry about like trying to beat the algorithm or trying to do all these different techniques. Just focus on making the absolute best content that you can and that's really all you can do. Ala asks, thank you so much, sweetheart. What do you love about being a YouTuber and what keeps you going with it? I think that, I mean, literally the best thing by a million miles is the community that we've built here. My subscribers chatting with you guys, you know, teasing, joking with each other, the comments, the messages, just the support, as well as the other creators that I've built, like a family here, that is 100% the best bit of it and the bit the thing that I would really miss and you just can't really how else do you build a community like this you know it's impossible I uh, especially you know during Covid the fact that I still had like hundreds of thousands of people to chat to and interact with and share our our hobby really and our joy together on YouTube and not even Covid could stop us I mean that is just priceless isn't it so shushan asks what keeps you motivated as a creator especially on days when you don't feel much inspiration such a good question and i'm going to give you a tip that i was given once that was more so at the time it was given it was given to me in re regards to like training and going to the gym and that is that actually motivation is overrated you don't actually need it you don't need to be motivated sometimes some days sometimes you just have to do it anyway you might not feel motivated you might not feel super excited to go to the gym or to sit down and film but some days you just have to do it anyway and you don't need the motivation you just have to suck it up like any job 
and just do it anyway. Motivated or otherwise. Jesks asks, do you think the beauty community is oversaturated now? Would it be difficult to start out on YouTube? 100%. It's probably the most oversaturated uh, genre on YouTube, I would say. I mean, when I started five years ago, it was, it was too late. I mean, not, it's never too late. There's always a chance that you can build but it certainly was much much harder it was certainly already extremely oversaturated when I started and we're now five more years down the line so 100% yes it is very oversaturated 100% yes it will be incredibly hard hard work and tricky to get really anywhere on YouTube especially in the beauty community, but it, nothing is impossible and there's always exceptions to every rule. Like I've definitely seen people grow, you know, who have started a channel since mine and grown much, much quicker and been incredibly successful. But I do think in order to do that in this day and age, in this genre, you really have to stand out in some way, have something unique, have something special, like a unique idea or a special idea or something about you that's very different to stand out. But it certainly isn't gonna get any less saturated. You know, every single day, more and more people are starting their channel. So every day that you don't start or get started and give it a go and find out for yourself is, you know, a day more that other people have done just that. So if it's something you wanna do, who cares if it is oversaturated, You'll never know, give it a go, that's the only way that you're gonna find out, but just be prepared for it to take literally years, you know, like it has me. And there are people who started their channels the same time as me that have yet to be monetized, yet to hit a thousand subscribers, you know. So you have to be willing to put in a long slog because if you don't have a really unique selling point that's really gonna help you stand out to people, then it's just gonna take a very, very long time, a very long time, a lot of videos, a lot of work. So if you're up for that, if you're in for that, don't let anything stop you, I say. Cheryl asks, what are my favorite videos to do? I love doing like chatty videos. I also love a mascara review. I just find them, I just love mascara, it's my favorite product. And I love trying new ones. They're very easy to film, very quick to edit. Like, they're just a very easy, quick, but fun video for me. I love doing my you don't need that videos. I just think they're just as fun to make as they are to watch. Um, but yeah, also I love doing topic videos and just talking about topical events, I guess. Sabine has a few questions. Lovely Sabine. So how much time does it take you? I mean, a lot of time. I upload three videos a week and I get, I mean, you could work as much or as little as you want really when it comes to YouTube, depending on how many comments you're doing, how much DMs or replies that you wanna do and things like that. You could work easily like 12 hour days, you know, on, on a day when you're filming as well as doing everything else, it's easily a 12 hour day. So yeah, I mean, it's endless. You could do as many hours or as few hours as you like to do. I always fully make sure that I take weekends off with my children and once they're home and awake, I take time off, but then I will also reply to my comments throughout the night. So, I mean, it's it's 100% easily full-time hours for me with the amount that I upload. Also, um, do you have to contact companies and brands for ads or gifts? It's the other way around. So it is companies, brands, contact me. I've never, I don't email brands asking for PR or anything like that. They basically have to find you and approach you. I mean, I guess you could do that. Um, but I don't, um, companies find me and, and ask, or contact me and ask to add me to their PR lists. And then how does it feel to be mentioned by Lisa Eldridge or Charlotte Tilbury in their stories or to get a comment from them? I mean, it's always lovely, always nice. Lisa's a little bit different um, because she follows me and we have spoken, but I will just say this, say this. Charlotte Tilbury doesn't comment on my posts, okay? her account might do but it isn't it isn't Charlotte herself I so yeah I don't get that excited about that that's definitely not the queen commenting that is whoever runs her social media account but I do always appreciate any sharing and comments and things like that because it all helps and it all you know is encouraging whether or not it's the lady herself or just the brand or someone from the brand but yeah just know 
that is very rarely the lady herself commenting and Pat McGrath saying Pat McGrath isn't commenting on her own social media, I don't think so. Now this is a very interesting question from Karen who asks, how did you get the courage to give up a regular steady job and devote everything to your YouTube career? Now, <laughs> this is awkward. I didn't do that. That's, I definitely did not give up my job to do YouTube and I would never suggest that anybody should do that um, because like I said, I just feel like this is a really insecure job. I, def I definitely didn't do that, okay? So I was made redundant from my job um, and then was asked to do a contract with the same employers but not be employed but to, to work a very tiny few amount of hours on a contract um, which eventually ended like kind of at the, like just before COVID and I was trying to get new contracts and get to be employed again by my old company um, and then COVID hit and like almost three years went by and I have been trying. So the next question from Jerry was, do you plan to return to your regular job? And I have been trying to do that for probably that entire time, two or three years now I have been trying to return to my old job. It's just not that easy. It's very hard, it's very tough and I'm now, you know, because of COVID and everything else that happened to me, I have like a two or three year like gap on my CV, which is not helpful. So yeah, I mean, I if I could click my fingers and go um, back to my day job, I guess, that easily, I would certainly do that. Whether or not I would keep my YouTube channel going as well would be like, I'm not sure if I could do both, I would love to do that. But it's just not that easy. The career that I was in is very, very hard to get into. There are not that many jobs, particularly in the area that I live in. And it's very, very tough out there. I would love to go back, but I just don't think, sadly, that it's on the cards for me. But to be clear, I certainly didn't leave my job and my career for YouTube. It was certainly not my choice. So I hope that I've kind of answered as many thoughts and questions that people had as possible in this video. So let's get on to how to enter this giveaway to thank you guys so much for being one of the now 51k subscribers and my past five years on YouTube. So all you need to do is, of course, you must be subscribed here on YouTube. And then I would love you to follow me on Instagram. And once you've done that, please just comment your Instagram handle down below your name on Instagram so that I can message you if you are the winner. I will give you one week from today, I'll pick the winner. So you have until the end of the day on the 2nd of May to enter. That's all you have to do. Follow me here on YouTube, subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on Instagram, comment your Instagram handle in the comment section down below and you will be entered for this amazing prize. And it is, of course, open internationally. I always get that question. Always open internationally. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you again so much for joining me on my YouTube channel and my journey. I appreciate your support and having you here so, so much. I hope you enjoyed this little chat and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.